What is it about your crush that ruins your infatuation? This might sound dumb, but I was dating someone briefly several years ago that I had a red flag moment and walked away. We had only gone on a few dates and hadn't become intimate yet. He came to my house when I had just bought my first car and he sat on the hood. I asked him not to do that and he just laughed. After a few more times asking and him blatantly ignoring me and mocking me, I dropped him. If he couldn't even manage respecting such a small boundary, I wasn't interested in giving him a chance not to respect others. Turns out that if you want to be my lover, you should not get with my friends. We talked about exes. She mentioned how she should have cheated on him because he was boring to be with. Yeah, I'm out. He littered, just opened his car door and dropped out a McDonald's bag on the ground. That killed it right there. I used to work at McDonald's. To know why McDonald's specifically was a magnet for litter droppers, a bubble that makes it a lawless space for some reason. Maybe it's because it's a tycoon of a franchise. I remember once, an old woman who used to always try to tip me for being a good cleaner. A Subaru car was parked after the drive through and was full of chav y dickheads. In each piece of litter they used, they'd throw it out of the car window onto the floor near to the bins. She could see I was disgruntled by it, but powerless and told me to not worry, and she went out there, and I saw a bunch of finger points, and suddenly a bunch of guys got out of the car, and picked up their litter as if it was their own grandmother telling them off. What a legend. This was like 20 years ago. I hope she's still alive and well. Fuck her cousin and have a baby with him. I figured out he was dating me and two other girls and playing each other against us. One night at a party one of the other girls wanted to fight. Honestly, I was drunk and tired and was getting in my friend's car to leave when she tried to start a fight with me over him. I just said tell your friends we got in a fight and you won. Also, you can have him. I got in the car and went home to bed. That was the day, decided I would never fight over a guy. If he wants to be with me, he will be with me. Not a crush, but someone I was seeing. Ghosted me when I started chemo. I went on a date with the girl. She called me up and we hung out two days later. Just before our third date, she had told me that she had just learned she would have to start aggressive chemo ass out and if I wanted to walk away, I could. I stayed. It was brutal. But I couldn't just walk away. So many nights, I was mad that I couldn't help her more or was powerless to alleviate a lot of her surgery pains. But, she got better. We got married two years later, and then, less than one year into our marriage, she cheated on me with my best man. Life's a bitch sometimes man. He was rude and dismissive to my little brother. I know little brothers can be annoying but he brother. 13 wasn't being nosy or disrespectful. He just wanted to know if my crush liked video games. I'm also really close to my siblings and wanted them to be included. The next boyfriend I had or current husband spent hours teaching my little brother to play old school Starcraft and to this day six years later, they still play video games together at least once a week. Upgrades? People? This girl I had a crush on early on in high school told me that she recently broke up with her last BF because his dad passed away suddenly, and, as she put it, wouldn't stop being depressed and a fucking crybaby about it. I didn't talk to her much again after she said that. Asked for my number to set me up with her friend. Noticed an attractive woman a few times at a local hangout spot. One evening, we struck up a conversation. This led to a series of casual hookups. We'd usually meet somewhere, which kept it light and casual. One night, she invited me to her place. Pretty quickly realized that this was the home of a married couple couple pictures, etc. I asked if she was married and she said yes, but it was okay because he was out of town on a fishing trip. I'm not a saint, but it really bothered me because I didn't consent to have an affair with a married woman. I noped out of there and didn't look back. We went somewhere, and she and her friends pulled into all three handicapped parking spaces. There were plenty of other spots, but these were the closest. None of them were handicapped in any way. Everyone does it, she said. No, no, they do not. We had made plans for Halloween. We were supposed to go to a club and meet some friends. She ended up saying she was sick and stayed home. About a week later, I'm going to drop her off at her house, and she told me what she really did on Halloween. She went to a different club with her friends not ours. There was plenty of other issues in the relationship, 
but that one truth is what made me snap. I just dropped her off without saying anything, and a few days later broke up with her. I don't think she even cheated, just too much lying and manipulation. We were hanging out in a neighborhood with a group, and she found a dead dog. Without hesitating she picked up a stick and started to sodomize the poor creature. I left immediately. Got arrested for being a child molester no previous signs. Edited to say arrested for being instead of convicted as. I loved my high school girlfriend and when we broke up in grade 12, I missed her ever since. Seven years later I messaged her to say happy birthday and that I hope she is well her reply was, thank you I finally got away from an abusive guy, but now gotta live in a shelter, my dumb ass said, I have a spare room come stay with me, until you save up and get on your feet, turns out, she was a very intense alcoholic, and squatted at my place, for 2.5 years smoking poppers, and drank with no initiative for anything before she decided to have a bath, started the water, then passed out drunk while I was at work, my apartment was severely flooded, I got evicted, and I'm now living with my parents. My lease agreement was $1,200 a month for a three-bedroom apartment with all utilities included in Toronto. I'll never get that again. On our only date, he picked me up and then parked in a disabled parking space because it was busy. Years of feelings for this man left my body in seconds. Started dating with someone else right after I confessed to her she didn't say yes or no. She said I need more time and one day later, she said, wait for me to leave him or give up. Moved in with her over the summer break and realized that we had nothing in common. No common interests or hobbies and our lifestyles were completely different and realized that except for flirting and schoolwork, we really had nothing to talk about. She was very attractive, but hated cats not allergic to them, but just couldn't tolerate being around them. The ultimatum she gave me was that if ever we were to live together, I'd have to give up my wonderful cat and devote my entire attention to her. I said, in that case, she should move on with her life because my furry friend will remain. She was one of the hottest girls in my high school and somehow she started liking a dweeb like me. She was a lifeguard at a pool and I visited her to just chat and chill while she worked. Then while having a more open and comfortable chat rather than school stuff she says, it was good that black people were enslaved. We taught them civility and gave them food or shelter instead of living in Saharan tribes. They owe us. Stop talking to her from then on. Nothing bad, but once we spoke in depth, I realized how completely incompatible we are. Might be messed up, but you can't eat from good looks. She made her dog eat her out and then sent the video out to a bunch of boys in the school. I saw like 5 seconds of that video and lost like 5 months of feelings for that girl. Still haven't been able to see dogs or peanut butter the same since. This is a public statement of how stupid I am, but it's time to tell this story. I was 18, and there was this guy who was 4 years older who was very into me. I was into him as well. We met months before, but we never really talked because he was seeing someone. When they broke things off, he texted me on Instagram. We started talking and he asked me to go to the movie theater together. I asked him when, and he said, Quando vua tu, a tua discrezione, which means, whenever you want, at your discretion. I had a past full of older guys trying to hide me from the outside world, because they thought I was too young, and I thought that, at your discretion meant, be discreet. I didn't want to deal with that bullshit anymore, so I completely ghosted him. I found out what, at your discretion, actually meant just four years after, I remember I felt so bad that I reached out to him and told him the whole story. He laughed it off and said it was no big deal. I still feel like a complete idiot when I think about it. Edit typo. Told me that the reason she hung around me was to get close to my very tall best friend. They dated for three weeks before he dumped her. Mistreating people close to them. Major turn off for me. Even if someone doesn't have anything they can give you doesn't mean they're worthless or not deserving of kindness lift people up, don't tear them down. He wanted to abuse animals with me and he was a porn addict. I feel extremely disgusted when I think about it. Started seeing a girl somewhat recently that works in the same industry as I do, and hadn't dated in some time. Initially, there were no red flags at all, and things were going great. Felt like everything in life was breaking my way for once. Fast forward to a few months later, 
and completely out of nowhere she accuses me of hacking into her devices. She then thinks that a speaker that I gave her when I was cleaning out some of my old stuff was listening in on her. I realize she has some serious paranoid delusions and mental health issues. I take this into account and choose to still be friends with her because I know she needs some good people in her life. I know she can't help the way she is and I really don't want to just cut her off because of mental health issues she can't control. Fast forward to a few days ago and I get a call from the local police that she reported me for stalking, breaking and entering and cyber harassment. I have literally not been to her apartment in several weeks at this point, so I explain the situation to the officer that called me and tell them she needs to seek some mental health treatment. I haven't made an attempt to contact her since and will be filing a restraining order against her if she continues to try to disrupt my life. I hope she gets the help she needs, but when you're dealing with someone who is legit crazy and that doesn't have a solid support network, that is usually not the case. My crush back in 8th grade asked why I don't just murder people since I don't share her Christian morals as I had recently told her was an atheist. I stammered out that morality isn't tied to church, and then I looked at her and saw the intense hatred in her eyes. That face was the ugliest face I had ever seen, and that moment cleared up any misconceptions I had about that particular person. He found out I had German family then did the Nazi salute right in front of me, also, my family didn't fight on the Nazi side. They fled to where I live currently when the war started. Play devil's advocate even if she didn't agree with what she was saying. At first, it worked, but eventually, it became tiring, comical, and most of all a turn off. During one of his untreated manic episodes, he told me that he simply processes everything faster than everyone else. That was why all of his past relationships and friendships had failed. People, including me, just didn't understand things, politics or religion or conspiracy or music to the level that he did. My crush instantly vanished. He called me boring because I wasn't laughing at the insensitive TikToks he showed me about disabled and autistic people. She was a gentle and polite girl, but she tried to get me into piss fetish. I mean, to drink hers was an absolute turn on for her total no-go for me. We went to a dinner, and there was a table of 8 to 10 people celebrating a birthday near us. At one point, they let a big laugh and excitement. She leaned over to me and said, Enners, am I right? So causally, so calmly that it took me a second to comprehend what she said. When it did I just left. Never spoke to her again. I knew her for a long time too. No clue she had that hate going through her mind. Talked about autistics in a very disrespectful way. I hadn't told her I was autistic at that point, but now I don't even want to talk with her. I really like ranch, and when she found out how much I used with my cheesy breadsticks, from that day on she stopped hanging out with me, which I thought was strange. I later found out from my friend she had a crush on me till she discovered out how much ranch I could put down. He kept cheating on his girlfriend. Good thing the girlfriend finally had the sense to leave him and ended up dating and marrying someone better. Had a long time crush on a family friend. One of those crushes that I always found myself thinking about when I wasn't actively crushing on someone else. I've known him since I was like 8 and he was 10. But we were never super close so I never tried to make it a thing and just let it stay as a crush that came and went. When the pandemic hit I had just gone through a bad breakup. And I reconnected with this friend through video games online while I waited for the school year to end quarantined in my dorm. The crush was coming back, but I knew he was dating someone at the time, so I didn't say anything and just enjoyed our online games, sometimes with his friends joining too. Then one night when it was just us on the call, we finished gaming and were just chatting, and he said that he liked me. I was like, aren't you dating someone? He said something like, yeah but I've been wanting to break up with her for a bit. I was so flabbergasted like dude, just break up with her then. Don't hold on for no reason and then tell another girl you like her while you're still dating someone. If he had just broken up with her first and then told me, me, me we'd be dating now. But that was such a turn off that he'd say that while still in a relationship that I haven't though about him in a positive way since then. Constantly calling me while I was on holiday with my friends making me fast a time with them during my holiday, me losing sleep because they want to stay up on a call, nearly making me go insane. Oh, 
This post made me remember a really hurtful one. When I was 17 at my first year at uni and made friends with a girl in my year. It wasn't like instant crush, but she was funny, and I grew to like her. One day, we were going home after classes together turns out, we lived pretty close to each other chatting and joking, and at one moment, she says, I really like talking to you just about anything, I would have jumped you right now if you weren't so ugly. I was a really awkward teenager, severely underweight, skin problems, and some other complexes, on top of that very introverted so it outright killed my remained self-esteem. Thing is that she actually didn't realize the effect of her words, it was like a passing comment to her and wasn't said with malicious intent, that fact actually made these words even more hurtful. Had a huge crush on a guy for years, he disappeared, so I reached out to him, he was working for his landlord, living off credit cards because he said his credit was already wrecked from a ticket he never paid, totally isolated. He stole toilet paper to wipe his ass and used hand soap to bathe. His shower curtain was perpetually off the rails on the floor of the bathtub, something clearly was wrong. Besides this he was a misogynistic uh, totally zapped all the infatuation I had felt for years. Hope he is okay. Tleeter, classic case of if you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? Oh boy, back when I was in elementary school, I liked a lot this dude, he was the teacher's son, and everyone wanted to be with him, 12 years passed, fucking 12, I was on my second semester in college, and there he was, we talked for a bit, normal, boring shit, and a couple of days later he asked me out, I said yes, and it has been the most horrible date I've ever had, he took me to get something to eat, after that, he said he needed to go to buy something in the grocery store, he left me in the car, waiting, he came back with absolutely nothing and drive us to an abandoned place, something like a kinder gardens parking lot. We started to kiss, and he sucked at it, I, I don't know why I thought he will be an incredible kisser, I mean, I wait for that moment for over a decade. Then, I realized he just wanted to fuck me right there. I was so disappointed and asked him to take me home. When I confessed, I was the one leaving love poems in her locker. All she said was, oh, that crushed me and I stopped. Two decades later, I found out from someone that she probably said that because she knew it was me already, it didn't know that she knew. Turned out, she loved them and had been reading them to the other girls, who were all jealous. Two similar experiences from two different crushes when I was a teenager within a space of a year or so. After I asked them out, their response was that thought of the idea of going on a date with me was gross. After I asked them out, their response was disgust. Also on going on a date with me, but to add icing to the cake this time around, their brother also threatened to beat me up if I didn't leave their sister alone. By that stage, I was pretty hurt. My crush's comments, I didn't want to speak to or have anything to do with them anymore anyway. Nothing ruins infatuation more than being told from people you were interested in that you are disgusting and have threats made against you for liking them. A simple no would have been more than enough. Had someone else's kid and played it off as mine the whole pregnancy. Fleeced my dying grandfather for thousands of dollars worth of homemade. He was a carpenter baby furniture. Ran off with it all after the kid was born, too came home from work, and everything was gone. I hope bad things happened to her, but not to the kid. I realized one day she was dirty, not in a good way lol. She didn't shower regularly and kept her place in disarray kind of dirty. She was beautiful, but couldn't get past that. Thought I found a fellow like-minded, progressive, bro kind of guy that really let my guard down with. Turned out to be so progressive and liberal that he had a truly weird and serious issue with my being Jewish. Didn't matter that like him I'm an atheist, he couldn't separate out the ethno from religious part of ethno-religion. Also had a weird angry tattoo he based his whole personality around, of an ape sitting on a toilet formed by a broken cross, Torah scroll complete with Star of David, Buddha, Confucius, etc. Said if my orthodox stepfather or anyone else was bothered by it, that was their problem for being unable to discuss art. Sound like a 20-something edgelord? My man was 42. Yeah, that's gonna be a no from me, dog. Was infatuated with this woman in college. We both got married and went separate ways. Both divorced a decade later and started chatting. Her with three children and 
I with none. We started chatting, and I was still infatuated. Eventually, we slept together, but only immediately after did she voice her opinions on abortion, and that she's 100% against it in all circumstances, and never used birth control, and that she wanted to get pregnant with my kid. Immediately, that night, she then started calling me pro-child murder, when I said that I was pro-birth control. I've never become more immediately unattracted to someone than that moment. Tleeter, had sex I guess. He made fun of a group of kids who had Down syndrome at the park. I told him he was a gross asshole and walked back to my car and left then and there. We were in our 20s BW. We are friends and have talked for years. He didn't want a relationship when I told him I had feelings. But one night things got kind of hot between us. Then he randomly fucked off on some plans, because I assumed maybe it was getting to be too much for him. I tried to play it cool, but he ended up dating another girl after. So I dipped out, decided I couldn't make to a hangout that night and disappeared. I was kind of mad, but I was mostly just tired of it. Eventually, he came back and said he wanted to hang out again. The girl seemed out of the picture. Things were good for a year, but then he told me he went on another date. And finally, it dawned on me that I'm probably some form of validation or safety net between girls he would rather take more seriously. I kind of see it as a weird Tina Belcher Jimmy JRB dynamic, but I'm not a kid and I'm having less time for this. The girl he was going to prom with went from long hair to a pixie cut and he got mad and called her a slur. Completely changed my impression of him as a person. Turns out, she had absolutely no filter. She took pride in saying what was on her mind, which was kind of cute at first, until I realized that she literally meant it, every thought in her head spewed out of her mouth, no matter who could hear it. Not a day went by where she didn't get into an argument with someone over some insensitive or insulting comment that she made, she was the female embodiment of Larry David, in Curb Your Enthusiasm.